Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Blitz with the Survival Outpost, and in this video, we are focused 100% on campsite selection and campsite security, because these are two factors that make sense no matter if it's total SHTF and you've had to bug out in the woods, worst case scenario, or if you're just hiking in the backcountry and you need to find a spot to set up a shelter and then sleep easy at night knowing you have a perimeter tripwire alarm system in place so if any creepy crawlies come running through your campsite apex predators or the human factor you got that covered so let's go ahead and jump into it starting right now with a new acronym that i learned a while back w e s s starting with w water okay kind of important if you're going to be setting up a shelter site you want to be somewhere within a general proximity of a fresh water source in this case i have a huge river right due south of, of this location so that's pretty much covered i want to make sure though that i don't set up right on top of the water source because there's issues with flooding and soggy ground and stuff like that so as long as i set up a reasonable distance away from the source where i don't have to travel super far to get water i'm happy with that next up is elevation obviously here in florida elevation i've never heard of it right there's literally basically no elevation out here at all but if you were in an area where there was elevation where there's hills there's mountains go ahead and take take advantage of that if possible it's going to give you a better view a better lay of the land around you um, more potential for observing any potential threats approaching your position however you want to keep in mind that you want to set up that shelter on the military crest don't set up on the ridge line where you're literally silhouetted against the sky where anybody can look up and look around and come and be like, oh, there's some dude up there with a shelter running around, you know? Um, you don't want that. So you want to move down the, the hill, the mountain, wherever you're setting up and, and, and put your shelter on the military crest, thereby having the hill or whatever terrain feature behind you and cutting out that silhouette issue. Now on to S, which stands for safety. Obviously, when I'm setting up a shelter site, guys, I'm gonna look around and be like, okay, are there any dead trees in the area that are gonna fall on me in the middle of the night? Okay, good, there's not. Um, am I, maybe, you know, maybe you're in a canyon, right? And it looks like a great spot to set up a shelter, but unbeknownst to you, there's gonna be a massive flood in the middle of the night, and that canyon that's dry right now is going to be completely flooded out with water. It could wash you completely away. And now finally, the last S stands for security. You wanna be able to sleep easy at night. You wanna have a robust perimeter defense set up so you don't have to sleep with one eye open because that sucks whether you're just out hiking and having fun or it's a you know a serious survival situation you want to be able to sleep somewhat easy at night so a robust perimeter defense where you have you know probable entrance routes locked down with some type of tripwire alarms that's going to be optimal but before you can do any of that you really got to take a little patrol around the area do a do a you know kind of like a 360 degree patrol of your surroundings making sure there's no threats in the area there's no signs of human activity you know there's not like a gator nest you know like 100 meters away from you things like that and then once you do that then you can get into the perimeter alarm part so let's go ahead and jump into the do you want a patrol right let's go ahead and just take a little stroll around here i'm going to show you just a 360 degree view of the campsite and we're just going to walk through this process and lock this place down so let's go all right guys so let's go ahead and get started on that patrol here's the shelter for a reference point and you'll note that directly behind the shelter is this huge maze of saw palmettos these are a pain in the ass to move through and i don't care how quiet you're trying to be they're loud and obnoxious to move through nearly impossible so i feel really confident that i would hear anything moving through this space it's so deep and so thick. So right there, just by default of choosing the space, I have half of my perimeter secured and I really don't have any worries about it. So that's good, less work on my part, less disturbing the natural landscape. But as we move forward here, we find the first entrance point, right? And this is where I've been coming into the campsite. You see, I haven't cleared any of this space at all. I prefer to keep it kind of closed off like this, but it's, fairly open and easy to move through so i'm going to continue using this as my infill entrance route whatever you want to call it and then i'll have to work to define some sort of 
sort of exfil route, which in this case, you see it's kind of wide open as we move through here and we look around to the north of the campsite. So I really don't want to be exiting in a haste out that way or even out that way. So the best thing that I can think of in this case is to basically come back here to the back of my campsite and get myself, find myself a game trail, like right there, and clear the space out a little bit so I can quickly move through the palmettos without making too much noise and get out of the area quickly. So in a nutshell, guys, we got half the campsite secured naturally by all those saw palmettos. And then we have about half the campsite that's pretty wide open. We got our entrance route locked down. I already told you guys how the exit exfil route will work. So now let's go ahead and just have a little stroll around here and have a look at the obvious points of entry. This being the first one. As you can see, we just walk around here. We're walking directly forward from the shelter at this point in time. And you see it's just, hey, look at that, wide open. Anything of any decent size can come through here and quickly access the campsite. So this is definitely a, a spot, a funnel, a space that needs to be locked down with some, some type of perimeter alarm. So obviously, looking around here, got a lot of open space, but it's really, the issue is this open space right here. Anybody can just walk right through here and immediately be right on top of the campsite. And that's not cool. So that's one spot we definitely got to secure. And then lucky for me, there's only one other wide open point of entry. And that is directly through here. You can see the shelter back there. And once again, it's wide open to the point where anything of any significant size can move through here just like I am, fairly undetected. So we've got two points to lock down and two different types of alarms to get the job done. So we're gonna go super simple and easy with some fishing line and this E alarm to secure that first entrance. And then we'll go more primitive with the second option. This alarm works basically like a grenade. Pull the pin and immediately you got at least 100 decibels, I believe this one is rated to. So this is gonna wake you up, no problem, in the middle of the night. You're gonna hear it and you're gonna be able to respond to it. So let's go ahead and get this set up. I think this tree right here is gonna be a good option for me to secure this route coming in. So you can use any sort of cordage. You can use snare wire, you can use paracord strands, you can even use fishing line for your trip wire perimeter alarms. But if you're gonna use fishing line, be sure to get something that's pretty heavy duty. Like this is 50 pound easy braided fishing line. So anything lighter than this I found just doesn't work and it just snaps the line and never actually triggers the alarm. So we're gonna run some of this and then in the other alarm that we set up, we're gonna use a different type of cordage. Okay, so what's the problem here, guys? Well, everything looks good except for the fact that anybody can see this. So let's do a little camo. A little bit of due diligence, camo in the alarm, and I think we're good to go for a test. Every time I do that, I forget how loud it is. I'm trying to be somewhat quiet out here, which is maybe a little difficult when you're testing tripwire alarms, but yeah, seems to work okay. So let's go ahead and move on, secure that other entrance route, which I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the deadfall, see how that works. So 
for this trap we're going to use a bit of snare wire and see how that works out but you know these traps are simple they're basic and that's what you want in a survival situation or just like i said when you're out camping backpacking or whatever this is stuff you want to be able to knock out real quick so you can kick back and chill So that was pretty effective considering what I was working with. Not much, okay? Mm. Optimally, you would want to have a large flat rock. Unfortunately, there's no large flat rocks in the area. Actually, no rocks at all. So I had to work with what I had there, but that is loud enough and distinctive enough that I would hear that. I believe I would definitely hear that in the middle of the night if I was asleep and I could react appropriately. So now the next one I want to try out is basically, um, what's called a sentry clapper. I've seen some people do this before, but I've never actually done it myself. The key is finding a piece of sapling that is gonna be springy enough to make this happen. So let's give it a shot, see if we can make it work. So the way this works in theory, guys, is you secure the middle right here with paracord, whatever your favorite cordage is. And then with that secure, you can pry the jaws open and put a little trigger in here. So when the snare wire is tripped, trigger pulls out and this claps together. That's how it's supposed to work. That's three different ways to secure your campsite. The E-Alarm is the simplest and most effective one at this point in time, but I'm confident with a little bit of refinement and tweaking and training, I can make the primitive alarms almost as effective, if not as effective, who knows? It just takes time and practice and getting out here and getting it done. That's really all there is to it. That clapper, I think, has the most potential to be effective. However, I need to plane down those jaws so when they, so when they come together like this, they're making full contact instead of 50% contact because, you know, the wood's all knotted and stuff like that. But more training, more practice, makes perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and state the obvious here, guys. You do not want to set up your perimeter alarms within five feet of your campsite. Give yourself enough time to react to the alarm. So defining a perimeter of, you know, 100 meters, 50 meters around your campsite, whatever you think is going to be reasonable for you to respond, that's, that's what you got to do. So use common sense when you're setting up your perimeters. Don't make them too close because... What's the point? You're wasting your time. So that's the first consideration when you're doing these perimeter alarms. The second consideration is ensuring that traffic goes through the path where your alarm is set up. Sure, I have open space right there, open space in front of me, and I can pretty much assume that the majority of, of animal or human traffic would flow through there, but I'm not sure. Things could go right past my alarm and I would never know it until it was too late. So the best thing to do is build a funnel to that trip wire point you know with branches debris whatever build that v-shaped funnel to ensure the traffic is always going to go through that point and trip the alarm okay guys so that's it the basics of choosing a shelter site and then setting up a robust responsive perimeter 
Now, how you guys get it done, hey, that's completely up to you. If you wanna build lethal traps, go for it. Just be aware that it's 100% illegal. And if you wanna go all Viet Cong on them, that's cool. But seriously, have you ever dug a punji trap before? I have. And it takes a crap ton of time and effort to dig a hole that's deep enough, that's wide enough, that's concealed well enough. And then all the stakes you have to cut and all the effort you have to put in really doesn't pay off in the end because the VC, the minute they got money, they stopped all that primitive bullshit, right? And the primitive traps. And they set up actual, you know, traps with hand grenades and claymores and stuff like that. So the primitive trapping and, and, and things like that, they look cool in the movies, but in real life, I just really don't see the, um, the payoff for the time and energy that you invest in it. But um, hey, that's just me. And then finally, guys, don't forget about man's best friend. If you have a doggy that is, is chill in the woods and doesn't freak out every time, you know, he hears a twig snap, then there's a great perimeter alarm right there. And then if you're, if you're not rolling solo and you're in a group or you at least have one other person with you, you know, you can trade out shifts and, you know, somebody can post watch for four hours and you, and you can take over. So you would have a sentry on top of your perimeter alarms, which... I don't think you could go wrong with that. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. I've got to run, but hit me up those comments. Let me know what you think. You guys do a great job of that. And um, let's just keep rolling. I don't know what's next on the agenda. I got like a list of like 40 different videos that I want to do. And I think maybe the next one is going to be something along the lines of mistakes that newbie prepper makes or something like that. Cause I kind of want to go over prepping in terms of the food and water and the mistakes that I made and maybe give you guys some advice on how you can avoid those same mistakes in the future. So once again, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button, share the video around if you like this content, and I'll see you next time.